Live, local, late breaking. This is WBAL TV 11 News Sunday morning. Welcome to 11 News Sunday morning. I'm Lisa Robinson. And I'm Sarah Caldwell. Our top stories in just a moment. Motive in either shooting. Well, the time is 7.06. It's 71 degrees on TV Hill. Usher in the start of the new school year with an eye exam for your child. Coming up, the warning signs to look for when it comes to your child's vision. And how much damage did Hurricane Irene cause in, your, in and around your property? An official from the Maryland Insurance Administration has news on hurricane deductibles and those affected. But first, you're looking at a live picture from SkyCam. Ava's next with your InstaWeather Plus forecast. This morning's medical alert, school's back in session, and certainly you want to make sure that your child is not having vision problems that would make school difficult for them. Well, Dr. Lisa Abrams joins me now this morning with some important points and tips that could help your child. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. All right, we have a lot of ground to cover, so let's get right to it. Sure. Let's talk a little bit about the common vision problems that uh, children can have. Well, of course, children can require glasses for their best vision. Mm -hmm. Uh, they might be nearsighted or farsighted, okay. but the real problematic things are uh, things lazy called eye? lazy eye, which is amblyopia, or strabismus, which is crossed eyes or wandering eye. Mm -hmm. And these are things that need to be diagnosed at a young age and treated at a young age, or they can uh, cause a lifelong vision mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you have, there are some, like the, the nearsightedness, the farsightedness. Stigmatism, those are things to look, look out for too. Yes, kids who are uh, having trouble seeing obviously are going to have more difficulty in school. So if a child's nearsighted and can't see the blackboard, that's going to be a problem. If they're very farsighted, meaning they have trouble up close, they mm -hmm. might need reading glasses. Mm -hmm. Astigmatism make, just makes things blurry. So okay. you want to look for things like your child's eyes crossing, uh, if, is your child squinting or tilting their head in some way? Are they rubbing their eyes a lot? Are they closing one eye when mm -hmm. they're trying to look at something? Uh, tearing of their eyes, things like that. Hmm. Okay, and so at what point do you be, get, wh when do you get the first eye exam and, and how often should you get them? Well, no child is too young for an eye exam. The, you know, the younger we diagnose these things, the better. So children are screened in the nursery by the pediatrician. They're uh, screened by the pediatrician at six months and about three or four years, and then we start with vision screenings in school. And we rely on those serial examinations to try to pick up a problem. But if a parent has any concerns, even if the child's preverbal and not talking or doesn't know their letters, we can certainly do a complete exam. If a child fails the screening or there's any concern by the pediatrician, or there's a family history of eye problems, because a lot of these things are inherited, um, like lazy eye or early glasses mm -hmm. wear or any kind of uh, childhood eye disease, then the child should have a complete eye examination. Okay, and real quick, let's talk about the, you know, the kids, they have to wear glasses, they're not happy about it, but there are some really great options out there. There are. We have glasses with all the little Disney princesses uh, here, and they come with That's a very cute. cute little case. That is really cute. Um, and then the boys' glasses tend to be kind of funky. Mm -hmm. And we also have glasses for kids that are less than uh, gentle with their glasses. These bend all over the place. Uh, they also make very cool sunglass cli mm -hmm. clips for kids that just magnetize and go on like that. And then, of course, rec specs or something protective for children who play sports. Let's talk about that for a moment. Every kid should, if that wears glasses should have these? You mm -hmm. know, in an ideal world, every kid playing a, a sport, especially, a, you know, a sport with a, a ball or a missile kind of uh, thing should wear protective eyewear. Uh, glasses are somewhat protective, but the most protective, especially mm -hmm. for mo the more dangerous sports, things like racquetball or baseball, uh, the rec specs are the way to go. And they, but they can get expensive. Are there any programs out there to help kids get those if they're playing? Um, I'm not aware of any specific programs. A lot of uh, sports require children to have protective mm -hmm. eyewear, so there may be, through their individual sport, there may be a, a way to help pay for it. All right, good stuff. Thank you so much. And you're Thanks. with the Cats and Eye Group in, uh, in Towson, and yes. If they want more information, they can always contact you. Dr. Lisa yeah. Abrams, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. From your kids' eyes to your skin, when we come back, how to repair summer skin damage. But first, here's a look at some events going on around town.